Could you talk about the inner master? Well, what comes to your mind when you hear that term, inner master? I think of a potential that exists within each being. Not necessarily something we're in touch with. Good starting point. We can say the inner then is uh, like spiritual, inner, subtle. Note that it can be found somewhere in your body, particularly, you know, like in your chest, or in, your, in a particular chakra or something like that. It's not particularly in your brain, but it is a factor for many. As a, a creative function of the intelligence, some would say the soul, the human. Which serves a very specific function in this universe. We might also call it the inner God or the inner Holy Spirit. And yet it is not a thought. It's not really an idea. We have to use an idea sometimes to communicate somewhat of the image that corresponds to this reality in each and every being. Some would call it the heart, the inner heart or the heart, master, master of the heart. Some would call it the divine spirit. Each one of these has its own connotations, and each tradition has its own, let's say, uh, description and understanding of what this is, how it functions according to its tradition. Um, some would also go along the lines of, well, it's your imagination. Some would say it's greater than imagination. And we'd have to say from this vantage point that it may be all of that and none of that at the same time. We can say, we can jump into another universe and say, Yo, you are the inner master. I am the inner master. Or it is the inner master. And we're still talking about something that's real. So the reality is that the inner master is the master of all. When a person shows up in a tradition that has living mastership, like a lineage, so on, it could be said that the inner master brings them into the tradition in search of itself. So everyone, it could be said, is in some kind of relationship to this inner master, this, this uh, level of perfection, this level of skillfulness and compassion that we say represent the functioning of the inner master, the subtle or super, super master, spiritual master. And it could also be said that that's the more important one. And that's the one that the master, the living flesh master, should be pointing to at every point possible. That is what the spiritual means. When we say the spiritual path, we're talking about the inner master path. The path of accessing the master as ultimate or perfect guide from within the individual so that no mistakes are made. So the inner master then is representing a state of perfection already and is realizable as that because everyone is connected to it. 
There are those who dream about it, but have no access to it or any connection to it on the physical plane. Well, they said, well, I'm dreaming about it. I'm seeing it on the inside. I'm seeing him or her on the inside. I'm seeing this thing and it's guiding. And it's real. It's powerful. And it's correct. It's very clear. We can say then that the imagination, right, the image making process, the creative imagination process relative to the unconscious mocks up the, the master and tells you you have to find the master, which means you have to find yourself. In every case, the master is really something about yourself. And a real conscious master is not going to tell you that they are, you know, the thing. They're going to tell you that you are the thing. That they're functioning as master in a manner of speaking or teacher, guide, or mentor, or whatever it is, in the highest sense, simply to bring that to you since you are tuned to the physical plane. The material plane, and that's all you can deal with. You can't deal with the subtler planes. So that the master who is dealing with all of those planes says, yes, well, the physical plane is a starting point for most people because they incarnate as the body, identify it as the body, and only the body. And that's who their self is, a body. Beyond that, their self could also be a mind, see, like, you know, more connected to the inner, the subtle realms, outside of the body, until we get to a deeper level of realization, after lots of practice and lots of peeling away of delusions and confusions and illusions and conflict, based upon self-division or living as duality, in some kind of seesaw play of, I, I, I don't know, but yet I know, and I am, but I am not, in terms of a paradox, and you're talking about the master then being heart space. The living master should be living heart space to peeps, and talking heart space to peeps, not just doctrines. Must be living it to the student. So when the student then meets with the living master in closing the gap between the, the, the master self and the living master that's there as a more realized or developed example of that, then they have to watch the master. They have to see how it does things, how it moves, how it plays, how it teaches, how it sits, how it eats. How it lives, how it works, how it hears, how it sees, how it touches, how it feels, how it knows. That's the thing to study. Not just the books and words about, but the living form of it. It's more direct. We can, we can adapt ourselves more. To the living that we see before us, because we are cultured to do that. We are raised and born to do that. See it and then do it. Hear it and then do it. Feel it and then do it. Do that. Watching the dance, watching the fingers go up and down the fretboard or up and down the keys on the saxophone. Manipulating the sticks, going up and down the strings bass, cello, or the violin, viola, whatever, up and down the flute keys, see, all these things. We have to see it, to hear it, see, and absorb it, and then we want to do that, we want to be that. It's no different in the case of mastery, mastership, accomplishment, getting it done with finesse, selflessness. So the spiritual process is about learning to function as a selfless being, or a master, turning it over to spirit. And so the master then shows up as something in the middle, intermediary, in the middle worlds. So you have a guide to, to the beyond, see, to help you take the step. It could be someone for a moment and then you need another form of it to advance your cause. You might learn all you can from one person and you want to step up more. So, say, no, it's not quite all that I need. So people move around. 
because they have to satisfy this thing within themselves. Some people find one master that's already too much for them, and that one master might be enough. Okay. Depends on the creative functioning of that master and what their needs are, because one person can be much more than anyone needs. Especially if you're up close to such a one. It can blow you out in some cases if they're functioning at a certain level of heart blownness. Okay. Then they will blow you out if you get too close. And then you have to adapt to being blown out, which means you're upping your ability, you're increasing your ability to handle more intensity, more brilliance, more power. And so sometimes you need that to help you get out of where you're stuck. Your muck, see? Your river of mud, not just blood, see? but your resistances that are more individually sort of created for yourself. Doubts that you have creates mud, see? difficulty. Immobility, stagnation, resistance, inertia, inhibition, darkness. So the inner master is there, something you can talk to because it's in you. You can speak to it. And we have different traditions where there's this inner speech that goes on. Some would say, well, that's kind of like prayer. Well, yes, it is in a sense prayer. But who are you praying to? Your higher self. Or that part of you that is connected to the God realm or the God state or some kind of higher realization. Everyone is born into this potential. But because of their river of blood karma, they are born separated from it as a realization and separated from it as a practice, as a way of life, because sometimes that realization can only show up in a culture. So, same with certain types of music. You can be raised in a folk music culture, and that's all you hear and that's all you know. You may not need any more until you go to a concert outside of your culture and say, no, this is it. Go hear Elvis Presley and say, no. Uh -huh. I'm all sugar. <laughs> Whatever it might be, see? could be it could be BB King mm -hmm. or Jimi Hendrix, yeah. or it could be Andre Segovia. Could be any of these famous peeps, yeah. artists, and, and who are playing a certain way and say, "No, that's what it is." Yeah. And then that's the next step. And we're talking about the many, many steps one has to take on their way to the master. And when you get to, let's say, a living master who has mutual recognition with you, they know who they are and you know who they are and there's not much to say and you have this kind of like problem. <laughs> you reach this vortex. And that vortex could show up in, in the form of everything stopping. Time stops, it disappears. You wonder where you are, who you are, because you're not sure anymore because you made contact, directly contact with something that is part of your inner consciousness beyond yourself. And that experience in itself is a form of realization that you're not who you are. You're more. And there's much more. Sometimes an automobile accident is like perfect for shaking you down and making you sensitive to this, outside of your ego, self-protection, self-comforting, self-cherishing programming. And that's exactly what you need. Some disruption that seems extremely painful and horrible, but yet it's exactly what you need to shake you out of your sleep and help you to wake up. And many people have come to me saying they came from an accident, uh, during which they had this kind of revelation they need to find a teacher or they're on the spiritual path or something like that. And I say, it's good, seize the moment because you know time is passing and this is going to disappear. You're going to become hardened again. You're going to become more yourself again. You're going to become lost again and in darkness again. Say, Possibly. Probably. So when you're opened like that and you're ripe, then it's good to see what it is and follow it to where it's going, what it's pointing to in this case. A teacher, a guide, a mentor, a guru, or whatever you want to call it, a friend, a spiritual friend, or some kind of master. 
as distinct from a teacher, a person who wants to teach you, talk to you in a certain way, and that's all they do. They're not living it, see. They're not creating it as such. See. They're not turning the wheel in their way, see, particularly. And so, they're maintaining the status quo. That might not be enough for certain people see, who have to climb, go up and feel the elevation. See. Then they know they're going somewhere. They want to leave the plane and feel the ascent. And there are many like that, like Olympians are like that. Creative artists are like that. They want to keep moving, going deeper, going higher, so to speak, expanding outward, extending even to the infinite. So the inner master is all about this possibility. Which then means, once you get beyond yourself and your river of blood and your river of mud, self-created resistances and programs that obstruct and keep you in darkness, then we talk about what, what else there is, and what else there is is space. Atomic realization, spiritual realization at the atomic level, and dealing with what that is, and seeing whether or not that, that means recreation at a whole new level, whatever it is. Some people around teachers or around music or certain things and they feel a complete change in their body, like they feel liberated. So people want to follow up on that. See? And it's not like hocus pocus or magic. I mean, we are vibrating at different frequencies, some more intense than others, out of necessity. It has nothing to do with ego, it has to do with design function. See? A lot of people say, oh, this person's on a trip, it's an ego trip. No, they might be designed a certain way. And there's nothing anybody can do, not even themselves, to change it. So we have to accept laws that are part of the design purposes of creation and thus uh, diversification, variation, see? and complementation at the same time. Because you, you might be drawn to an opposite in a certain way. A person is very intense and you're in your, your sludge, see, or mode, and, but being around that person is going to bring you out some more. See, to balance you out, like yin and yang balancement. And it might just be a little bit you need to come out and that'd be perfect for you. You don't need to be like a person, but you feel the motion and you have to judge that for yourself. So the mass is an electromagnetic functioning, uh, let's say, medium for peeps. And peeps can be drawn to the person of a master and the body of a master and never comprehend anything that's going on inside the master. Be like galaxies away from what the master understands or how it's functioning. So you can be around a mess and picking on, the, on the, their facial features and miss the point completely, thinking that what you're looking at is what the mess is. I have to tell you, you're far from rea reality. Master is channel. Through the master comes things that defy its appearance, its culture, its origins, and even its, its purpose. It goes beyond its purpose. Which is to, to, to be alive and survive and be a, basically a, a functional human being. This goes way beyond that, because we're talking then about something coming through that could save someone's life. Not just change their direction, but save their life completely. Save them from themselves. Say. Redirect them to a path of light and what is uh, healing. Yeah. Come in now. Is the same inner master within all of us? We can say that we have different brains, but they all tied together. The same consciousness, like we share consciousness like we share space and air. Or water, we share it, right? But we get our share of it, see? So you have your share, your appropriate sort of quantity or quality of what that is, according to your karma, according to your design. See, and that may change over time, but that's what lawful means according to the individual. And the spiritual process is not about group consciousness, it's about the individual unfoldment and individual realization. It's not about who you're with. It's how you use whatever it is that you have to use. <clears throat> and so the, the function of the inner master means this, and this is important to tell the people, the public, that you don't have to join an ashram, you don't have to go to India, you don't have to be in a particular spiritual community, because the inner man is universal. 
You just need to know how to tap into it or be around somebody that can help you tap into it right where you are. Whether that's in confinement, in the hospital, uh, in the military, which is where I had my, my most profound awakening. In the military, I realized God, let's say. It's a, a joke. You want to realize God, join, join the army. It sounds insane. But whatever the pressures are that are needed for the kind of condition you need in order to break open, so be it. It's not up to us to really choose and pick that. It's not something I created. It just so happened that way. It's a liberation can come not from your efforts, but from what it is. See, And we're talking then about descent. And so being with the Master helps you to be open to the descent of spirit and the forces of the creative universe, or the ascent into that. And the changing, modification, or raising of the vibrations, which is all part of your practice. That's what breathing does, by the way, just quite naturally of itself. Modify your vibratory rate, your heart rate, and your brain waves all together. <clears throat> and it's not. Seeing somebody you're attractive to does the same thing. <clears throat> it's like, oh, whoa, what happened? I'm feeling I was you know, in anguish before, and now I see this thing, and oh, wow. Or a car, you can see a car. <laughs> you know, go through the same kind of juices flowing. Say, oh, look at this car, look at the bumpers on this car. <laughs> look at those hubcaps, I'm salivating. <laughs> uh, and so, it, whatever it is, <clears throat> there's this correspondence with it, and no less with the inner master. Whereas in the world of effects, the material world, you're bouncing from one wall to the next relative to stimulation and or disappointment. You're going here because you, you were there and you're not comfortable there and, you, and then you want to go somewhere else because you want, want more comfort or pleasure or whatever it is. So you want more, let's say, you know, happiness, right. relatively speaking. Right. You want to be around the right people, you're kind of crazy peeps. Right. You're weirdos. Everybody has their own weirdos. So people that mirror their type and their egos. So you go from one group to the next looking for that, looking for yourself. But there's no looking for the inner master. But what you're really looking for, it's the inner master, where, you, where the whole circus of experience and knowledge stops. And peace shows up, finally. See. Purpose shows up. Now clearly it's not for everybody. But because you meet the inner master doesn't mean your karmic life necessarily stops. See. It may be put on hold because you need to complete something inside yourself. You need to come to terms with something. So it's really about you meeting yourself and your inner purpose, your real purpose, and your own powers. Meaning something that is profoundly critical to your survival as not just a person, but as a spirit soul. See? An awakened awareness. Call it what you want. So, so a light beam. We're talking about something much less than that, but along those lines. <clears throat> not finished, but in the process of becoming finished. So, and it's also part of it. The mass is also in the dreams. <clears throat> so you have a dream dimension of association with the inner master. And the inner master can be also the outer master. Outer master can be your dream master as well. <clears throat> you can bring a dream to the mass, it's already they knew it. They can give you even more detail about it. And say, you know, you might even have this kind of dream. They say, oh, I did. So it's part of the same consciousness. The idea is the guidance there is that it's towards better understanding of what this phenomena is so that there is more of a sense of coming together inside yourself. Integration. Left, right, side integration. Left, right, hemisphere integration. See, front, back integration. See, high and low integration. Higher and, you know, the earth world and, and the solar worlds integrated in your consciousness. So you become complete and you do what you have to do. You fulfill your karmic debts out here and you feel much better about it. <clears throat> and most importantly, you're not suffering the same old nonsense. Delusion. You're not suffering anxiety. You're not going crazy and being crazy just because you happen to be that. Well, you, can, you can be stuck with that. You can stay with that. <clears throat> if that's your happiness, then enjoy your, your neuroses. No one wants that from you. You can keep it. It's yours. It's all yours, actually. Enjoy it. Uh, but once, once you reach a point where you, you, you sense that's not working for you, you don't need that, then you might relate differently to the inner urges towards the inner master. Could be a woman, doesn't matter who it is, really. 
It has no face and it has no name. See, in a mess, they can take on any shape. It takes on the strangest shapes in some cases. <clears throat> I've heard a lot of complaints about a Puerto Rican guitar player. <laughs> they said, no, it can't be. Sorry, that's not the one. You can't use it. No way is it going to be able to help me. We, we can't put a limit on what it is and how it shows up. It could be an animal. And there can be telepathic resonance with the animal that accomplishes what the inner master is supposed to do. And that's how it works. It works by all means, any means what, whatsoever. And this is also true the way the spirit works. So, it works in strange ways. It means in ways that your mind can't even comprehend sometimes, and yet it's working that way. Because it's not about your mind, it's not waiting for your mind, it just works the way it works. It's up to you to catch up to it, and you say, voila, wow, I didn't know this. Say, I've never seen this before, yet it's always there. Come in, in the master. How do we know how to, uh, or what pressures to intensify to bring out the connection with the inner master? What pressures to intensify? Well, that, 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 that would be obvious to you. <laughs> Right. If that's supposed to happen, it'll be obvious to you. It could be, could be physical, could be emotional, could be memory, pressures. Yeah. Any one of these dimensions, right, the physical, the astral, that is in terms of action, and the astral in terms of emotion, psychic phenomena, and all the rest of that. Well, these are very profound realities. See? And most people are comfortably related to these so that they are not overwhelmed by these realities person has a little nightmare relative to the astral plane, they don't even want to dream anymore, they don't want to sleep anymore, so they're not ready for what that is, particularly, see, until they're ready. Then they say, yeah, come what may, let me have it. I want to see it all, I want to know it all, I want to pass through it all. Great, that's what a practitioner should be about. And that's this warrior attitude about saying, yeah, I want to know it all. Bring it on, in a manner of speaking. Fearlessness, see, open fearlessness. Saying, no, this has to get done. I want to do this before my body cancels out, and I don't have a chance to do it. I want to do it right now. So let me see where I need to go to meet who I need to meet, and talk what I need to talk to such a person or persons or group, and let's get the training on. Let's see what it is. Let's get this shakedown going. It doesn't have to be the military. It can be something at a community level. It could be something private, depends on the individual. It could be something by phone, even. Hmm. It could be something by correspondence. But I think the, the bottom line here is, what are you willing to give up? See, in terms of your own self-destruction. To facilitate this process of transformation on the spot. Not to say, oh, well, you gave that up already, so you don't need to give up anything anymore, see? That's not what the process is about. See, the process is not about, I've already, do already done that. That's not the process. It's what you need to be doing right now. That's the process. It's not what you did. See, that's convenient. See, so I really, really did that, so I'm, I'm immune to that. It's, that doesn't apply to me anymore. But say, maybe you didn't do it right the first time. Maybe you need to do it properly this time. A lot of people enter these particular practices and they just wash out because they're absolutely not ready. They're intellectually aware of what it is, and that's, that's a delusion. You think you know what it is because you read the book. And you know what, uh, let's say, uh, the mountain is in the Himalayas, because you know what it's all about because you read the book on it. <clears throat> good information, but it doesn't help you. Because you've heard about God and you've heard about masses, good information is not going to help you. And if you made the mistake of being around a master or a teacher that didn't care for you, then that, that's, that's a teaching for you. You've got to be around one that does. Okay? So it's not against masters because you found a bum. It doesn't mean they're all bums. No, like a doctor. You find one doctor and you may not have any resonance with that person. You've got to find one you have resonance with. Okay? You're not going to be stupid enough to be judging all doctors and medical practice simply because you ran into a bum. You know? <laughs> A crook. <laughs> right? You deserve the crook. What do you want? <laughs> what 
What can be said about that? You set yourself up for a crook. Maybe it's a crook for a crook, right? Stop being a crook. <laughs> Maybe you find the right person, a good, a, a person that's not a crook. Stop being one yourself, see? In a master, reflection. <clears throat> sometimes it's a mirroring process, sometimes it's a window process. Sometimes you, you get around a certain type of person, a teacher or whatever, a meditator, and they don't need to say anything to you. You just get it, right right then and there, you get it, or it could be an art form or whatever, you get it, and it's done, right then and there. It's done. But if what we're talking about is done, then that means there's no turning back. There's a change, there's an alteration, see? there's a, a step up, see? It's a radical change. So. Not the same. See? It's not business as usual. Something's gone, something is gained. We don't, won't describe that any more than that, but you know you're not the same, you can't go the same anyway. You can't, you can't be the same as such. Because you weren't being real before. And so this thing disappears, an alteration or a psychic breakthrough occurs, and then you say, that's done. Can't go back to that, don't do that anymore. Then we're talking about a real process of letting go. And it can happen under the strangest of conditions. But you know it when you know it. Say, can't go back. I'm gone. I'm done. It's done. Period. Perfect. No return. Don't turn back. <clears throat> Keep moving. Oh, but my family. Don't turn back. Your family's everybody. <clears throat> everybody's your family. The world is your family. The family you're talking about in some cases could be the casket you're afraid to get out of. And they want you out of that casket so you can be happy and come back to them and bring, bring some love to them instead of the darkness that the so-called family means because of what, it, what it's about. Yeah. Come in. So are you saying that we need to create inner space in order to be able to access the inner master? Not necessarily. It's like that. It is. The inner master is. It's not somewhere else. It's got nothing to do with what you're thinking and feeling. It just is already. You have to just open to what that is. And when you are able to recognize the simplicity and utter purity of what that is, then you follow that. Say, wait, 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 now I have to stop. I have to go somewhere where I can feel some quiet because I need to tune into something. And this is true in all creative work. You, gotta, you have an environment that you, you enables you to tune in. It doesn't matter if you're into science. It doesn't matter if you're into religion. It doesn't matter if you're into music or painting. You have to tune in, have a direct resonance with what it is. So once you know that that's how direct it can be, then you just open to it. It's that simple. It's not about time. It's not about conditions. It's now. So it's all about the now. In the mass, it's present. And you hear this in the religious way. It's that Jesus, Jesus is, and the spirit of Jesus and the God is, and spirit is all around you. It's all pervasive. Well, get it. Yeah. That's not a myth. That's not a lie. It is space. We're talking about what, what is the space of it and what, what space can you be conscious of? It's not elsewhere. So it doesn't, it, the, the reality of it doesn't promote more schisms see, and more excuses for peace. No, it's present. There's no excuse. It, it is what it is. It's a matter of knowing it, like water. There's no excuse. You know where you get water. It's not a mystery. Trying to force it up. You've got a bottle of water or something. It's available. It's not a mystery. It's not a problem. It's not a conflict. Just get water when you're thirsty, you drink it. You have to breathe, so you inhale. And we're talking about inhaling, properly receiving what the grace is of spirit. Inhaling it and exhaling it. Taking it on and giving it to other peeps. See, being a channel for the grace of spirit. See, the creative grace of spirit. That's what mastery is about. Living from grace and creating more grace in the space that grace is. See. Enjoy it. Thank you.